two. An algorithm for determining the diode resistance for the piecewise linear approximation. So the piecewise linear approximation uh, uh, of the exponential diode current will never be great. Okay, but we can at least try to choose RD in a somewhat optimal way, recognizing that when highly accurate results are required, there's no substitute for the nonlinear model. Consider the algorithm of figure 4.7. So if you look at the next page, so this is all new as of yesterday. So if you don't have this, um, you can get online and, and print it out. Um, but effectively, this is, this is like the, the little algorithm that I recommend. Um, this is overkill for a sort of first pass at a problem. Um, you probably don't need to get this involved with it. The, the trouble, as you may recall, so I'll go back up to this figure here. Sort of the goal is to find a slope, 1 over RD, that makes sense for uh, uh, approximating this nonlinear curve in the operating regime. That's our ideal situation. But it's only going to cross. It's only going to be equal. I mean, besides this initial point of crossover, it's going to cross over at one location. So you have to choose that location to be somehow optimal, right? I think uh, uh, so. The what the one that I chose in the Example problem of 0.2 ohms uh, was based on just saying, oh, uh, what's the maximum possible current that we could have go through this thing? Maximum possible current then led me to say, oh, okay, well, then I want to be close to, um, I want these lines to, to intersect close to the, po the, the max possible current. And that was just how I like, came up with 0.2 ohms. It was just kind of a really rough choice. Um, I don't want to get too bogged down in choosing RD because, like I said, it's it's never great. So uh, you know you got to choose something, but um, it's never gonna gonna really be perfect. So this uh, process is gonna help us choose a better value for RD if in cases where we want to be a little bit more precise with our choice. So. Um, we come down again. So the first thing to do is to analyze the circuit with all of your diode resistances undetermined. So you put in the piecewise linear model, right? So you've got your ideal diode, and then you've got your voltage drop, and then you've got your RD, right? Point 0.6 volts, and then you got your ideal diode there. Um, ch -ch -ch -ch. So this uh, uh, we put in there, and we just leave RD fine. So analyze it as far as you can, and then when you need to check to see, it, you know, when you're doing your method of undetermined of uh, of uh, assumed states. You have to come up with actual values for the voltages. So you ha have to come up with some value for RD. First pass, just say it's zero. Okay. This is the. Um, uh, this is obviously not a great approximation. <laughs> this is just saying that if the slope is zero, then uh, or if RD is zero, the slope is infinite. So if you go back up to your diagram here. Um, when RD is zero, our approximation is that V or that I is ID is zero up to 0.6, and then the slope is infinite, and it just goes straight up. Not a great approximation, but it gets us a starting point for uh, coming up with what the actual what what the uh, uh, current would be. So if you assume it's zero, you get this nice uh, 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 sharp turning on of the diode, and you can solve for how much current would flow through. And that's going to be the, the sort of the, the max current situation, right? 
especially for simple circuits. If you have a lot of circuits, then you can get this, this sort of uh, thing happening with multiple diodes ch switching their states. But for the most part, this will give you a good starting point for getting uh, a current um, uh, solving for ID. And that's the next step in the algorithm. We solve for ID. Um, so back down to our algorithm. Solve for ID. So for the current through each diode, and then you uh, uh, have this nonlinear relationship that you're trying to approximate, right? So if we use that nonlinear relationship to find VD, the corresponding voltage that would be across the diode, then um, we're going to have the current and the voltage. The current came from assuming that it was this idealized piecewise linear model. The voltage came from then turning around and assuming it was the nonlinear model, which is sort of a bootstrapping method that we have here. Uh, and then if it's time varying, so it, things are pretty straightforward if this is all, uh, um, if you're only working with DC signals that are not time varying. But if your input's time varying, like if it's a sinusoid, it's an AC signal, then this is, these are functions of time, right? The, the diode voltages are functions of time. So uh, just like in the example we did with the half wave rectifier, uh, if that's the case, you can find the means of the current and the voltage, okay? Uh, with a slight caveat that you don't want to count the time interval during which it's off uh, in, your, in your mean calculation. Um, it just gives you a more accurate result if, if you don't, because then you have all this extra time in there when it's off in some cases. So it gives you a better estimate of, of the sort of average value of the current when the diode is in forward bias uh, and the voltage. And then you can use the linear model to find the, the resistance. So that's what, oh, I don't know why this version didn't come with the, equation, but this is equation 4.2. Um, uh, and, and so you can find what the resistance would be for those average values, okay? Then you can reanalyze the signal. So you can go back up. So if you have this value of RD, you can go back and use that. Instead of RD equals 0, which you had last time, you can use RD uh, 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 equal to whatever you got as a result of your analysis and then do this again iterate on it so go through again you're going to get better values of current better values of voltage and you're going to get a better R um, this should converge I haven't proven that but I'm I'm uh, 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 I, I don't know of any cases when this doesn't converge uh, I think it will converge it would be nice to have a proof but I didn't have time to try to prove it so uh, uh, this does uh, uh, typically converge, at least. Um, and once you're, so this would be, um, if RDI has converged, if the answer is yes, then stop iterating. Uh, uh, if no, which means if, you're, if your resistance estimate has changed a lot since the last one, um, go back and, and do it again. And you could automate this. You could write a MATLAB script that just loops through your equations and gets you closer and closer to value and then you can say oh, okay if if the last value you could do a while loop and you could have like if it hasn't convert if it hasn't uh, if it hasn't changed you know more than one percent since the last iteration then stop um, that would be like the while loop method or you could iterate for some uh, uh, predefined number of loops like you could do a for loop with a thousand iterations in it and then take whatever the last one is so it would be a fun problem to work. But I, part of why I didn't talk about this when we first uh, introduced it is that I, this isn't the main idea of diode operation. This is just a way of approximating the resistance value of the piecewise linear model. So I don't want to get us too, too enamored with this process, because if you really want to do a great job of modeling this, you just use the nonlinear model. Okay. Um, this is just trying to make your piecewise linear model as good as possible. And it's, and it's, only, it's only optimal in the sense that uh, 
the average value of the current through the diode and the average value of the voltage through the diode should give you um, um, a, a, the best possible operating point. But if you're going to be varying the voltage and current a lot, the average value is not going to be great. If the, if the if variation is small, though, um, the average value should be pretty good. So, yeah. So this does uh, have its limitations, too. It's only as good as a linear approximation can be, which isn't great uh, of an exponential function. So, yeah. Okay. Any questions on that?